piece, and it, this is my first time speaking to a business association or of this type, is because my experience with the corporate lobbyists in Ottawa, the main groups there, have been that they have been utterly useless in advancing any common sense interests for the people on the ground. My message to corporate Canada is that when I'm Prime Minister, if you want any of your policy agenda pushed forward, you're going to have to convince not just me, but the people of Canada that it is good for them. My obs obsession, my daily obsession, will be about what is good for the working class people of this country. That is federal Tory leader Pierre Polyev very recently speaking to the Vancouver Board of Trade. As you heard there, Polyev made no bones about taking aim at corporate Canada. Federal Finance Minister Christian Freeland says she isn't buying what he's selling. I could not disagree more. Um, our government, I'm going to start with workers, um, because for our government, when we think about the economy, we start by focusing on Canadian workers. And frankly, it's a bit rich for Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives to pose as somehow being on the side of working people in Canada. Nothing could be farther from the truth. So what's behind Polyev's pointed words and will it work for the Tories? Let's bring back the front bench, Saeed Selvam, Shakir Chambers, Kathleen Monk and Mariko Walsh. Shakir, I'll, I'll start with you. We've touched on this before, but this is a real crystallization, I think, of the strategy being employed by the Tories to go after maybe people who wouldn't conventionally vote for them, but are, you know, in the working so-called working class in this country. Do you think that's what they're aiming for here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no question about that being the strategy. I think for Pierre and the Conservatives, I mean, they obviously see the working class, blue collar workers are looking for a place to park their votes. I mean, what was once the domain or the, the NDP kind of had control over these kind of voters, I think they're seeing an opening and they can capture that vote and bring them over to their party. And I think if you look at some of these polling results, that kind of bears it out. And we spoke about this months ago, uh, Vashi. You know, this is not the first time conservatives have kind of invoked this playbook. Uh, Aaron O'Toole tried previously before Pierre Polyev. He was unsuccessful, but you have Premier Ford in Ontario 2018, 2022, very successful. You have down south, uh, someone like a uh, former President Trump breaking the blue wall in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, getting the working class vote. And you have Boris Johnson prior to that. So I think conservatives realize that there are working class folks looking for somewhere to park their votes. They've lost faith in both the NDP or these most progressive parties. And it's open season who can court those voters over to their side. Saeed, I would, I would say it's the NDP and the Liberals because the Liberals had a lot of union support and that, you know, there's probably a delineation in the strategy between public sector unions and private sector unions. But what also kind of stuck out to me, that strategy, like Shakir said, is, has been discussed before, but the way in which Pierre Polyev went about it, like the degree to which he sat in a room full of business people and basically said, I'm not going to do anything specifically for you, and I don't subscribe to your lobbyists. He has his own reasons for doing that, which I think we can discuss in a moment around the carbon tax. But what did you think of, like, the way in which he, he spoke about it and what his aim is there? Oh, no, those evil corporate lobbyists. Don't want to be dealing with any of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, you know, they, taking a page out of, uh, I think, Trump's book, Attacking corporate lobbyists uh, is always popular. It always lands well because uh, a lot is not understood about what lobbyists do for the most part. So oftentimes they're demonized. There's a big difference between lobbyists here in Canada versus uh, those in the States. So just want to put that out there for, for viewers who are interested. Uh, but I think his strategy on the whole is following the anti-scab legislation he wants to make sure that he doesn't fully lose any of the working class voters who were willing to give their votes to him, which I think there are actually quite a lot of, especially this time around. Um, and he doesn't want to lose them to the Liberals and the NDP because that type of legislation is very much in favor of workers and very much in favor of unions. So I think it's smart for him to start talking about that um, in terms of where he decided to do it at a venue full of business leaders and, and corporate Canada. I'm not too sure it was the, the best place to do it. But, um, you know, the other thing that I think is important to note is that he also has um, a corporate lobbyist who is a uh, main strategist on his campaign team. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is a fact. Mm -hmm. And also Deputy Leader Melissa Lansman 
was also a lobbyist as well. So it's it's interesting um, because this narrative again is is popular. It's something that is very sound biteable. It's something that is easily repeatable. Uh, but I just don't uh, know how much you know it's going to cut through and get workers over to his side. But it, it may just given the way that he's polling um, and the strength of his polling right now. I mean, agree or disagree with what he says, he knows how to get that clip out, right, Kathleen? Like, the strategy behind, like, the lines that, that they came up with here, like, you have to know that that's going to generate a headline or two. For sure. I mean, he's a professional communicator and has been a politician for 20 years and has been actually working and massaging these lines. He's very effective, very effective. But they had to come up with a new strategy, right? The Conservatives in 2015, 2019, and 2021 have been stuck somewhere between 32 to 34 percent of the vote, the popular vote. They need to grow that. So what's the tactic? It's like, look at different parts of the demographics. Who could we pick off and bring into our voter universe? They've identified for a long time it's going to be the working class voters. And so, and so he's going after that hard. But the thing is, his rhetoric is there. His pitch is there. The clips are there. But his record is not. His record time and time again, you know, even let's just take the anti-scab legislation that, yes, they are backing. Um, but I know, and if you talk to any conservatives in this town, the fight in caucus around that whip to yeah. vote. Big, it was big. It was a big fight. Yeah. It was a big fight. And literally quotes were like, this is antithetical to our values. We don't believe in this. And so you have to ask yourself, what other questions can we put to the conservative caucus or the conservative leader himself? What, where do you stand on back to work legislation? Where do you stand? on minimum wage that you voted against countless times as you've been in office. In fact, Pierre Polyev was the minister who actually had to walk over and do the front work for the Minister of Labour back when he was in, in Cabinet because Kelly Leach herself, who was Labour Minister at the time, could not actually stomach pushing through the Bill 377 and 525, which were the most anti-Labour bills that have ever crossed the path. So, I mean, listen, I could do five shows on this. I know his clearly. record inside <laughs> yeah, and out. Clearly, yeah. um, he is anti-Labour to the core, <laughs> but the tactic is a smart one. Like my colleagues have said, he wants these votes, and it's up to somebody hopefully me or others, to point out the, the complete, uh, you know, record that he has, this complete opposite of this. Just picking up on that mm -hmm. point, though, that Kathleen made, Marika, about the anti-scab legislation. For everyone listening, this is legislation basically done, pushed for by the NDP, and then almost co-crafted by the government and the NDP, that says, if you have workers on a strike uh, on federally mandated workplaces, you can't send in, quote unquote, scab workers. It'll basically outlaw that. The, the, what the Conservatives did was support unanimous consent to move that, that bill further along the legislative process. As Kathleen said, it was like there are Conservative MPs extremely upset yeah. about that. What does it say to you that he's willing to spend his considerable political capital on doing that, though? Well, I'm not even sure if he's spending that much political capital. I think just the power of his position, how high he is in the polls, is a lot of leverage to keep caucus in line. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great selling point for essentially anything that he does right now. Mm -hmm. the, the disruptors in caucus, the people who don't agree, don't have a lot of room to stand on because he is delivering while he is also making these policy changes. And, you know, for the NDP, they don't have somebody making that point in their caucus the way Kathleen just did. So they also need to have a good inside think on why it is that Pierre Polyev is eating their lunch on the working class vote. But I actually also take another message from that Friday speech if you pair it up with his Sunday rally. On Friday, he told Corporate Canada to either pick his side or pick Justin Trudeau or Jagmeet Singh side. He really divided those up. He didn't just say, he didn't really say, I won't follow your lead or take your ideas. He said, you also have to run campaigns mm -hmm. to, to advocate for those ideas. And you also have to call out Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh in those ads. He was very directive mm -hmm. in what he was saying. And then on Sunday, he told sort of the average voter at his rally, start your campaign to ax the tax. You could be a mosquito in a, t in a tent. You are essentially, you know, one small person can make a difference. He said, we did it in Atlantic Canada, and we're going to do it now in the rest of Canada. So he actually tried to start a massive pressure campaign from corporate Canada and then the average voter in the last three days. And I guess we'll see where that goes. But it was very interesting, his direction to launch ad campaigns against the government. What did you think about that, Shakir? I think on the corporate Canada piece, I think it makes a lot of sense. Listen, it's a what is a very for the message kind of uh, for the people kind of message, right? But I think if you're a corporate Canada, uh, he wants you to point out the policy fairs of the Liberal government, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. If you're looking at the polls and you're the Conservatives, poll after poll shows you're probably going to win a whopping majority. 
you want to ensure that if these folks are coming to you and lobbying and saying, I want X, Y, and Z, get Canadians on board. The Conservatives shouldn't have to do all the legwork themselves. You want these changes. So I think a lot of what he's doing does make a lot of sense to me. The only thing I would say is uh, a little more aggressive is that he wants corporate Canada, when you go meet with the Conservatives, when you talk to them privately, he wants to make sure whatever you say privately, you're willing to say publicly. And if you're not willing to have skin in the game, it's going to be tough to, for us to advocate for your policy change. That's why I think you get into a little bit of trouble, because ultimately, listen, if you have clients and the government does a policy initiative for you, you're probably going to applaud the government, right? I mean, you're going to you're expected to do so, I, I would say. So it's going to be very hard for a lot of these companies to, you know, deal with the government of the day, knowing that 18 months the government might change. But the government that's that's changing and coming into power might be a little upset because we didn't pat them on the back for everything uh, that we were saying to them in private. I think also the genesis, my understanding is, from behind the scenes of his disdain for, in particular, big oil companies or big resource companies, Said, is that uh, they have welcomed, or not welcomed, but they have embraced the carbon pricing policy, basically. They got on board very early, and that's why he sort of described them as not fighting for their workers. He took very specific aim at this, uh, at this event in Vancouver, at them, too. I think so, but I think there's a lot of corporate Canada as well that is against that tax. Look, I think that many in corporate Canada understand that this is politics, and at the end of the day, a leader, especially of a conservative party, may go after lobbyists, may go after corporations, but when it comes to practice and access, it may be a different story down the road. This is essentially playing the game of playing to a base, playing to voters, talking about things that actually sound good and resonate well in order to eventually win an election. So I think that while there's a lot of uh, talk publicly, I think that there is an understanding that, hey, at the end of the day, you're going to need corporate Canada and you're going to need um, some of those folks advocating on, cor on behalf of corporate Canada to spur jobs, investments, et cetera, especially during a cost of living crisis and during a productivity crisis. But I just think also they're looking at the same polls that the Liberals have now started to see with their kind of, you know, we're against grocery corporations that the NDP, I think, principally thought, but also looked at the polls. Years, like, Canadians are not overwhelmingly since this inflation crisis deciding that they're on the sides of corporations. Not at all. Whether always informed by fact or not, the sentiment out there is one that these politicians are all tapping into. Yeah, and it's also a sentiment that's global. You can see that in the states yeah. and, and, and their rhetoric is too. And so when you unpack that, if you know that Canadians are frustrated with some of these corporations and some of these grocery CEOs, and, and you hear Pierre Polyev says, I'm going to unleash, I'm going to unleash free enterprise, what does that mean? That means that he's okay with actually, you know, Sobeys letting Dollarama not sell bread because Dollarama was selling it cheaper and Sobeys going to have rights in certain areas. Or that's okay that maybe Manulife can cut a deal with Loblaws and you're going to feel forced to get your, 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 uh, your drugs at a certain store or not. That's unleashing. Just unleashing free market enterprise means unleashing those corporations from any kind of regulation, competition or safeguarding or health and safety issues and, and actually let the corporations do what they want. And we know what corporations will do what they want without government hands or controls on them. They will make as much profit as they can for themselves and for their shareholders. That's what business does. And that is what Pierre Polyev means when he says he will unleash free market enterprise. He will do that because actually when it comes right down to it, that is who he is beholden to. Because when he goes to those fundraisers all over Canada, if you track his tracks, who he's meeting with, where he's getting his money from, it is from corporate Canada. Well, it's also, though, from to be fair to the Conservatives and Last for Turmeric, mm -hmm. it's also from a high number of donors. Correct. Who are yeah. individuals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of all the people giving this message of anti corporate, it's actually Pierre Polyev, interestingly, the conservatives who seems to be resonating the most. And maybe that's why he's. He's doubling down on it, as you pointed out at the top of the segment, with crystallizing his attack on corporate Canada. I, I don't think you would agree with your full characterization sure. of yeah. <laughs> what he means by free but he enterprise. Will be to answer those questions. Yes, but he, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the House is back next week, so yes. maybe he'll scrum so, with us. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much to the front bench. Appreciate the discussion tonight. Saeed Salvam, Shakir Chambers, Kathleen Monk, and Marika Walsh. There they are. I'll take